Okay. For number 21, it says Jack has 12 apples. He gave a quarter of them to his sister. How many apples are left with him? Whenever you see a fraction applied against a number, you know you'll have to multiply the number by that fraction. So the first thing you do is convert the number to a fraction, and then you multiply the two fractions. Okay, what is the number that we're given is 12. Any number, just put it over one, and it's a fraction. Then you multiply it by, what was the fraction they gave? One quarter. Okay. When you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the two numbers on top. The numerators, in this case 12 times 1 is 12. And then you multiply the denominators, the numbers at the bottom. 1 times 4 is 4. Okay. 12 divided by 4 is, is 3. 3 times 4 is 12. That's how you can easily check. Once you divide a number by another number, the, the answer you get, you take your answer, multiply it by the denominator, and you should get the numerator. That's how you check. 3 times 4, 12. All right, that's the correct answer. Right. So, what is that number? The quarter is what he gave his sister, not what's left with him, what he gave away. So three apples is what he gave away to his sister. He started off with 12, and then he gave away the three apples to his sister. What does he have left? 12 minus 3 is? Nine. You can always check again. Nine plus three equals twelve. That's how you can check. All right? Any subtraction or any um, uh, addition, you can do the opposite function the other way. So if it's minus to get this answer, you plus to get back to the number that you started off with. A very easy way to do it just to cross check on your answer that's a handy thing to do when you've got exams and you're giving answers or little tests so this is what he gave his sister nine apples is what he has left with him right so the answer is because you always got to answer the exact question that's asked in the test or in any kind of a questionnaire. The question is, how many apples are left with him? The answer, nine. You can say nine apples, but nine will do. The next question, 22, asks us to look at this fraction, 6 over 10, and to convert it to a decimal. If we go again to the placeholders, the, the, uh, in, in a number which has decimals, say 0, 0, 0, 0. That's a decimal. So on this side you have units. And tens to the right you have tenths with a th on the end tenths hundredths let's look at what that is six over ten so it's tenths six tenths six out of a possible ten parts because it's tenths it goes in this column First column to the right of the decimal. So that is where you will put the six. So in decimal, it will be 0 0.6. And that's your answer. Number 
Number 23 asks us to find the lowest common multiple, the LCM of 3 and 6. If you've watched the video that I've done on finding LCM, uh, you'll see that there are several ways to uh, get to the answer, depending on how, how, uh, how much you've practiced and how much you've developed your skills. But the easiest way is to first get the first number, write out a few of the multiples of that number. So three is, first of all, it's three, then it's six, three threes are nine, three fours are 12. And for six, six ones are six, six twos are 12, six threes are 18. Can stop there because lowest common one is all I'm trying to find is the first number, the first multiple that shows up on both the first number and the second number. And if you're looking at this, six appears first here and it appears second under three. So six is your lowest common multiple. It's the lowest multiple which is common to six and three. You will see further down you have 12 as well is a multiple of both. It's a common multiple. So it's a multiple of both three and six, but it is not the lowest. The lowest is six. So the answer is six. I've already shown you the easiest way to find it. It's not necessarily the fastest way, but it's one of the easier ways to find it. Now I'll show you another way, and because these numbers are very small, it's also quite easy to do it this way. Whenever you get two numbers, and you're asked to find the lowest common multiple of two numbers, and one number is a multiple of the other one, because if you see three here, three times three, uh, three times two is equal to six. So six is a multiple of three. And because six is a multiple of three, you know automatically that the bigger number is the LCM. So that will be your answer. That, that's a very fast way of, of finding um, the answer. Number 24 asks you to convert a mixed number. Mixed number has both the whole number and it has a fraction as well. Converting that to a decimal. Now, there are two steps to doing that. Okay, so a decimal has that sort of a structure, right? That decimal number. Now, the first column to the left of the decimal point is the units column. So when you look at a mixed number, this, if this is single digit, two, it means it also belongs in this column. If it were 12, then the one in front of the two would go in the tens column and the two would go in the units column. But as it is, it's a number that's less than 10. So this two goes straight into that. So we'll write it there. Okay. So now we know where the two will go. All right? Three quarters. Now three quarters it will be hard to put that straight into a decimal unless you're very experienced with decimals. So the second step in this is that we have to convert this fraction to an equivalent fraction with a denominator that's a multiple of, um, of 10. So it has got to be Actually, it's not, not a multiple of 10. It would either be 
ten or a hundred or a thousand then you can easily slot it into decimal number so can we convert it to over 10 or can we convert it to over 100 well we'll try i know 4 into uh, 10 you'd have to multiply it not by a whole number it would be um, um, also a mixed number or a decimal a number involving a decimal so you will try multiplying it to convert um, multiplying it by some number which you will figure out to convert the denominator into a hundred we could try 10 but that that looks to be a little complicated so we'll go for a hundred okay so now we are finding the equivalent fraction to 3 over 4 we need to find the equivalent so the denominator will be a hundred and how do we find the numerator how do we find the number on top first we find out what we have to multiply 4 by to get to 100 4 by what equals 100 have you figured out it's 4 times 25 and just to show you here if you have four sets of 25 25 plus 25 is equal to 50. This 25 plus 25 is equal to 50. And this 50 plus 50 is equal to 100. 25 times 4 equals 100. So here, times 25, you get 100. And what do you do in an equivalent fraction? To the numerator, once you well, either numerator or denominator. Depends on what factor you've used. For either side if you've used this times 25 for the denominator you do the exact same thing to the numerator times 25 3 times 25 is 75 75 75 okay so now we know 3 over 4 is also equal to 75 over 100. So if we think of this like we've been thinking of, um, say, 1 over 10, if we would say 1 over 10 is 1 tenth, then 75 over 100 is 75 hundredths, which means this 75 slide straight into these two columns the 7 goes here and the 5 goes here so the answer so I have, I have not got much clean board left here 2 2 and 3 over 4 is equal to, we'll rewrite that, 2.75. And that is that mixed number converted to a decimal. This question asks you to circle which of these four sets of numbers is in descending order. So biggest number going down to the smallest number. So each number that comes after must be smaller than the number before. Okay, when you look at these four numbers, they are the same four numbers except they are put in a different order so perhaps it's um, a good good approach is to look at these four numbers and first think of which number is the biggest and which one is smaller than that and 
until you find the one that is the smallest. Now, any number, the bigger number you have right on the left, if a number has two numbers to the left of the decimal place, the bigger those two numbers are, the bigger the overall number is. Because remember, all the numbers to the right of the decimal place, they are of smaller value than the number right on the left. Because if you think about your decimals, first you have your hundreds, then you have your tens, so you have your hundreds. Maybe I'll just, first you have your hundreds, then you have your tens, then you have your ones, then you have the decimal place, which is here. And then after that, you have the tenths, that is the one over ten. Then you have the hundreds, one over hundred. Okay? Yeah, I'll put the decimal place. Right. So if you have numbers over here, they're much, they make the number bigger than if you have numbers over this side. Okay. So if we look at the four numbers, let's choose one. It says 0 0.003. So it has 0 in the 1s column, 0 in the 10s column, 0 in the 100s column, and 3 in the 1000s column. So that's pretty small. Can we see any other number here that's smaller? No, that is actually the smallest one. Okay, so we want to find the series of numbers where this one is right at the end. We'll, we'll just put it at the end here to see the, the one that we come up with that is the smallest. Okay, so nothing in the ones column or the units column, nothing in the tenths column, nothing in the hundredths column, then a three in the thousands column. Let's look at the next number. Okay, before we look at the next number, Let's look at any other number that has nothing in the ones or tens or hundreds column. So this second number has something in the ones column or the units column. So we'll not look at that for now. This number here, over here, 34.92, it has a number in the tens column and the units column. So we won't look at that. This number, this number 0.349. It has nothing in the ones column. All its numbers are after the decimal point. So we'll look at that. Now it's it's bigger than this 0 0.003 because 003 has nothing in these columns and only right in the hundredths column. So we'll put this in the second, second place, second smallest. 0 0.349. Did you notice the other two numbers have numbers that are to the left of the decimal place? These are the, so we've looked at this number, we've looked at this number, now we've yet to look at this number and that. This number is 3.4, so it only has one in the ones column, and this one is 34. Well, you know right off that 34, right away, you know that 34 is bigger than 3 doesn't matter what's after the decimal place. If they've got numbers here before the decimal point, to the left of the decimal point, then that's the most important thing you look at first. 34, much bigger than 3. So we know that 34 is bigger than 3.4, 3.492. So we know that this one will be in second place, and the biggest one will be this 34. Thirty-four is the biggest one. Okay, so if you look at this, which of these series fits this one? Look at this last one, obviously not, because it's got the biggest number in 
in the end and we want the numbers to keep going smaller and smaller exactly like this that one too is out of the question doesn't fit that one too is out of the question that one seems to be the only one that has the smallest in the correct position let's check the other numbers those two numbers match those two numbers match and those two numbers match so sorry we will circle the a series because the question specifically says circle the best answer now i don't know whether you want to circle the whole lot or just circle the a whichever one but always do exactly what the question asks you to do. And when you're checking your answers, if you've finished a whole series of, of um, questions, you go back and you read every question and check that you've given the answer the way they want to see the answer. If they said underline the answer, you underline the answer. If they said circle the answer, you circle the answer. Number 26 asks you to add two hundreds, two times a hundred, twelve tens, twelve times ten, and six ones, six times one. You've got to find what that equals and then you add them. That's the simplest way to approach this problem. 2 times 100, well, all it is, is 200. 12 times 10, 120. See, anything that you multiply by 100, you just take that number and you add two zeros, like you've done here. And any number you multiply it by 10, you just take the number and you add one zero. And there you have it there. And 6 one, 6 one's a 6. I should align these um, so that they're in their columns, right? All it is is asking us for the sum of these numbers: six, two, three, three hundred and twenty-six. Let's read the question again. What will be the sum is the question they're asking you to answer really at the end. After you've added that, what will be the sum? And that is your answer. Just have to keep checking that you're answering the question exactly how they want you to answer the question. Number 27 says that Vincent had 150 goats, 150 goats, and he gave half to his brother. So how many, how many goats did he give away? Now there's certain uh, words that we use or expressions that um, represent a ratio or a fraction fraction, a percentage. So one of those words is half. Now half, when you express it as a fraction, is one over two. So out of the two parts, one, one of the parts, half of it is what we're looking for. One over two is a half. Now just so that you know there are other terms that I used, a quarter, a quarter, in a fraction form is one over four. One third is one over three. Those are just examples. But whenever you see half of something, you know right away this is the fraction, one over two. And you've got to multiply this fraction, one over two, times whatever number is being, um, being said as part of the question. Okay? 
So 150 goats. First thing, convert the 150 into a fraction. So 150 over one. Now it's a fraction. Any number, convert it to a fraction, just put it over one. Then you multiply by half is equal to multiply the numerators. 150 times 1 is 150. 1 times 2 is 2. And then you take the 150 and you divide it by 2. So one, one, um, if you don't know the answer straight off the top of your head, then you can divide it 150 using your long division skills. 150 divided by 2. 2 goes into 1 how many times? Can't. 2 goes into 15 how many times? 2 times what is the number close to 15? 2... 7 is a 14. Okay, 7, 2 times 7, 14. Okay, three numbers there, only two here. Add a zero, same thing here, add a zero. What you do here, you do here. Minus that, you're left with 10. A zero minus zero is zero. Five minus four is one. So you're left with 10. How many times does two go into 10? Five. Two fives are ten. Two times five is ten. Two times five is ten. Ten minus ten is zero. Add this to seventy-five. And that's your answer. Seventy-five. Hundred and fifty divided by two is seventy-five. And that is your answer. So how many goats? Did he give? Check the uh, question again. How many goats did he give away? 75. I don't know whether you want to say also 75 goats. But um, 75 I think is adequate. Number 28 asks, which number in the set, and the set is up here, which number is in the set breaks the pattern? So first we try and find what the pattern is. Then we find the number that doesn't really fit. It's not following the pattern. So that's the number that breaks the pattern. When you're looking at numbers and series of numbers and there's a pattern, then you test uh, certain things. Is it adding something to get to the next one or multiplying something so is it adding the same number is it multiplying the same number or some, something similar subtracting the same number easiest one to check if is it's adding this if it's adding the same 45 to 50 hmm plus five right hmm Plus five. Let's check. Does it plus five to go to the next one? 50 plus five, 55. Oh, yes. 55 plus five, 60. Oh, yes. 60 plus five would be 65, right? But this is 63. Hmm. But if it was 60, um, yeah. But 65 is the next one. And then plus five again is 70. So really this number is sort of, sitting there, not really fitting. If we took that number out, then it would just be plus five, plus five, plus five, plus five, plus five. So it's really this odd number here, 65. Uh, sorry, 63. Right. You'll also notice straight off that all of these numbers numbers are multiples of five. See, all of them are in the five times table, well up to here. Then it's five times 13, five times 40, but all are multiples of five. Twenty-eight. 
24 divided by 7 converted to a mixed number. Very quick way to approach this is do your division, maybe a long division. If it's a mixed number, there'll be a remainder. That's how these things go, right? So 24, 7. Okay? Does 7 go into the 2? No. Does 7 go into 24? Yes. How many times where it's close as possible to 24? 7 twos are 14. 7 threes are 21. Okay, that's just under. 7 fours are 28. That's too much. That's over. So 7 threes. 7 threes are 21. Minus 21 from 24, you're left with 3. 4 minus 1 is 3. 2 minus 2 is 0. Right? So you're left with 3. Can 7 go into 3? No, it can't. So this is the remainder. That's the whole number part. And this is the remainder part. This 3 divided by 7 is the part that doesn't fit doesn't fit neatly into a whole number. This part is the number that, it's the part of the number that's less than one. It would be on the right side of the decimal, the decimal point. So that is your mixed number, right? Three and three over seven. You've got your whole number part, and you've got your fraction part. That's the mixed number. Let's check the question again. 24 over 7 as a mixed number is, and we found it. So that's the answer. This question talks about Dhamma, buying three things from the store. Bought some milk, $5.35. I've written the three numbers up there, the three prices. Bought potatoes. I think those are potatoes at $1.60. And Oreos. Yes, I like Oreos. Oreos at $6.95. Then it says, what change would he get from $20? So he's gone to the shop, he's paid for all of these things, the shopkeeper has added up the cost of all the things that he has bought, Thumb hands over the $20, the shopkeeper deducts, subtracts the total of what he has bought, all of those things, the total of it, the sum of it, all added up together. That total, the shopkeeper has taken that away, has subtracted that from the $20 that Lama has given. First thing we do when we get these problems, you write up all the costs and then you add it. First step, right? Five plus zero plus five is 10. We have the zero. Now, as with decimals, make sure you write up your numbers so that the decimals are all in line. Respect the decimal point. Always align it, right? So when you're adding everything, make sure everything is in its proper column. That's zero, carry one into the ones in the tens column. So six and three is nine, plus nine is 18, plus one is 90, nine, Carry one over here, but we have to align the decimal point. So the decimal point is here. One has been carried over. Five plus six is 11, plus one is 12, plus that one we carried over is 13. So three and nowhere to carry over. So write 13. Okay, so that is what the shopkeeper has totaled. But the question is, what is the change that Lama will get? So the second step is, 
you have $20, write it up, $20, then you will subtract this total up here, the total of what he has bought. Right? Zero minus zero. Again, you align your decimal points, right? Then that column, zero minus nine. Zero, you can't minus nine. So you've got to borrow one from here. So if you borrow one from here, then this becomes nine and this becomes one. Because this has had to borrow from that side. So I've got one over here now. 10 minus 9 is 1. Put the decimal point so that it all aligns. 9 you have now there. 9 minus 3 is 6. 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay. So your change we have found is $6.10. $6.10. Did you get that? Let's read the, read the question again to make sure we're answering exactly what is being asked. Okay. What change would he get from a $20 note? So change, so we, we're talking about money, so we have to mention the number of dollars and the answer we have here. Six dollars and ten cents. This question talks about unit of measurement. Since it is talking about the distance between two places, then obviously we'll be using a unit of measurement that talks about length, that is used for length. So we won't be talking about a unit of measurement that, say for example, is used to measure weight or volume, like what kind of volume is in a cup is different. So we're talking about distance, length. And I have written up here a few of the units that we use to measure length, distance. It's length when it's very small unit, and then it kind of increases to distance as it gets bigger. So millimeter is a very, very small measurement. So if you look at one centimeter on the ruler, it's just very small. It's like between my two thumbs there. And that one centimeter is divided into 10 parts to get one millimeter. One millimeter is very, very small. Then centimeter is what I showed you. It's just that between my two thumbs there, very small. Oh. Okay. I'm unlikely to be using something that small to measure distance between here and Nandi. Here being Suva and Nandi. What about meters? Okay, this is just 30 centimeters, but 100 centimeters is a meter. So we have about three of these rulers. Right, three of these rulers end to end, and that's a meter. So you'd use a meter to measure the length of a table. Like a table might be one meter, or the table might be a meter and a half, or two meters, or three meters if it's a very, very long table. But still, a meter is a bit small to measure distance between two cities in a country. A kilometer is that one meter I'd say roughly the length of my arm 
Multiply that by 1,000. That is one kilometer. Kilo is usually meant to mean, um, used to mean 1,000. So kilometer is 1,000 meters. So out of these units, measuring length, distance, a kilometer would be most appropriate in measuring um, the distance from Suva to Nandi. So answer, read the question again, what unit of measurement? Answer, kilometer. You can put KM for short. This question asks, what is the radius of a circle if the diameter is 10 centimeters? In case you haven't already learned, the diameter is the line from one side of the circle or sphere, because it's not necessarily a circle, sometimes it's also a sphere or a spherical shape, from one side to the other side through the center, it has to go through the center. That is the diameter. What is the radius? Is the line from the center of a sphere or, or a circle or any kind of a spherical object to the outer edge, to the side or to the perimeter. That's the perimeter. Right? So on this diagram, I have put the radius in a dotted line. I'm not sure whether uh, how clear it is on the video, but this is the dotted line. And this right here is the diameter as it's given in the question. So diameter is 10 centimeters. Now one thing you will notice, if the distance from one edge to the center is the same as the distance from the center to the edge, then that means that the radius is a half of the diameter because the radius is only one part, but you need another radius on this side to make the length of the diameter. So actually the diameter, 10 centimeters, is two times the radius. Yeah. In other words, the radius times two is the diameter. So whatever length you have for the diameter, you can divide it by two because only half of it is the length of the radius. If we were to put that, we would say um, the radius is half the diameter. Or the radius, we will say R, is equal to half. Remember, we've already said certain terms or words can be converted to fractions or represent fractions. And half is 1 over 2 times the diameter, which is 10 centimeters. But 10, you convert it also to a fraction, right? So 10 over 1. What does that equal? You multiply the numerators. 1 times 10 is 10 over 2 times 1 on the bottom. 2 times 1 is 2. So it equals to 10 over 2 centimeters, which is also equal to... 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 centimeters. I would write it there, except I'm running out of space on this side. So 
to that. Radius is equal to that, it's also equal to 65 centimeters. And let's uh, um, read the question again, just so that we know what is the radius of this circle if the diameter is 10 centimeters? Let's write it out properly. Radius is equal to 5 centimeters. Thank you for watching!